Welcome again to another Sermonette on the Mount, Occam that is. Uh, you know, last week and the week before, we've been talking a little bit about abandonment and rejection, how to forgive from the heart, but I wanted to follow it up a little bit uh, this time with talking about the um, manifestation of forgiving from the heart. Um, many times when I do an exercise like I shared last week, and you'll have to get that one to uh, take a look at the exercise we did, but when many people have gone through this exercise, they'll call me later, like a day or two later, or three days later, and say, you wouldn't believe what just happened. And I'm not at all shocked because when they tell me what has happened, it's exactly what's supposed to happen. You just don't forgive somebody and then it just be done. No, it actually does something in the spirit realm. You know, last week I was telling you how um, when you don't forgive others from, uh, from your heart, you retain all their sins. So what happens is that when you retain their sins, what is that really saying? It's showing you what they're living in. Think about it. If you're retaining their sins, if you're feeling anger and resentful and hurt and bitter and don't love yourself and unworthy and, and confused and all these things, if you're feeling those things, you got a clue as to what they're going through. You've got a clue to be able to go, oh, wow, Lord, they are miserable. Wow, I get it. See, until you understand that it's not just them attacking you all the time. It's that they're, uh, they're, they're, the way that they're treating you is because what's in them. It's what they have for themselves. And so if you don't forgive them, then whatever they have for themselves, you're going to get. So it's a good idea to forgive people. Now, if you've got a, uh, a past of, of individuals that you really need to forgive, uh, the way that you can tell is if you don't feel warm and fuzzy about them. Um, if you feel like, oh, I don't even want to think about that right now, then there's unforgiveness in there. There's, a, there's bitterness in there. Some people say, well, I don't have any feelings at all. Well, that's probably because you might have a hardened heart. You can't feel anything. So there's a lot of reasons why uh, we need to take a look at every person we think we've forgiven and make sure we truly have from our heart. And I want to tell you something that happened to me today. I didn't know that I had a broken heart. And when you have a broken heart, the things that you say, your demeanor, the people you, 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 you interact with, you're not able to love properly. You're not able to be truthful with mercy and grace. Um, it comes out possibly judgmental, pushy, brutal. And yet, we, we try to love each other in the love of the Lord and we're just stepping on each other's toes because we have a broken heart. I didn't know that for these last five years that I had a broken heart back five years ago. And my husband is an amazing man and he brought it to my attention. He says, Linda, I think you still have a broken heart concerning that situation. And I thought, Maybe you're right. And the minute I said that, the tears began to fall. Then I knew, I knew that he was right on. So I began to investigate that with the Lord. And that's when he brought me to this place saying, you have had a broken heart for five years and you've held on by the skin of your teeth um, in the things that you're doing in this ministry. And he said, I'm honoring you and I'm holding on to you. Matter of fact, there's a scripture I read in Psalm. It says, when you help others, when you feed the poor, when you bless others, he says, he will sustain you in your sick bed. Well, I wasn't always in bed, but I was sick. I wasn't feeling myself. I was, I thought it was hormonal. I thought it was age related. No, it was a broken heart. So the forgiveness came when I was able to receive forgiveness, when I was able to forgive 
the individual that broke my heart. Didn't mean to. Their family member didn't mean to. Um, I just received it differently. My mind processed it differently, and it caused me to have a broken heart. You know, a broken heart produces hopelessness. It produces uh, a painful existence, you might say. It caused depression. Um, you lose your faith. You, you fall into doubt and unbelief. You start to give up. You start to run. And when I finally stopped and said, I have a broken heart. I didn't have to do anything about it. All I had to do was acknowledge that I had it. And within hours, I'd say, because it took a couple of hours for me to get through this. Within hours, I was back in my right mind. I had peace. There was no confusion. I wasn't feeling uh, under anything. I wasn't oppressed. It went the minute I recognized that I had a broken heart. Now, the people that broke my heart um, are feeling broken. Can I read you a scripture? It's in 2 Corinthians 2. And I have it right here. I'll read it to you. Uh, 2 Corinthians 2, verse 5 through 11. But if any have caused grief, ha, huh, has anybody caused you any grief? Uh, he has not grieved me, but in part, that I might not overcharge you all. Sufficient to such a man is this punishment. Okay, if if you're feeling grief, if you're just, oh, I can't stand that person, they make me feel so horrible. Well, that's how they're feeling. And it says that sufficient to this man is the punishment. It's like feeling grief isn't fun. It's not a blessing. It says it's a punishment, which was inflicted of many. Now that's saying right there that they're either inflicting many or they've been inflicted by many. Whichever way it goes, there's a chain reaction that happens. You know, that person doesn't forgive that person and that person doesn't forgive that person and it goes on and on and on. Okay, so it says, so contrary wise, what's the, what's the first thing we want to do? We want to get away from them as fast as possible. But here's what the Bible says. But contrary wise, in other words, don't run, don't, you know, all talk about it in a gospel. Just, it says right here. It says, but contrary wise, you ought rather to forgive him. Comfort him. Okay, so first we got to forgive him. Okay, so I'm working through the forgiveness stuff now. You know, we think to ourselves. And that's good. And then I can just forgive him and just forget him. No, it goes on to say, and comfort him. So how do you comfort somebody? Well, you don't do it at a distance. <laughs> so you might have to put up with a little stuff in order to comfort somebody. Lest per perhaps this person would be swallowed up with way over the board sorrow. Do you know that you're actually helping somebody not fall into the depths of despair by comforting them? Isn't that what we want to do on this earth? We want to help people. What if the person you need to help is somebody who is helpless, doesn't want any help, doesn't even like you? There was a woman, <laughs> I have to tell the story, this fits perfectly in here, who worked at a restaurant and I would visit the restaurant frequently and I would always end up in her station. She'd come over with the menu and throw it on the table and say, what do you want? <laughs> And she wasn't very happy. It wasn't very happy to see me at all. And I, you know, I would take my order and stuff and she would just be so rude and mean. And so one day, before I even knew this passage, I made a present for her and I sent it to her. I mean, actually, I sent it to her. I made it for her and I walked in. And when she came to my table, before she even said a thing, I said, hey, I got something for you. I handed her this gift. She opened it and she said, Nobody has ever done this for me before. She sits down next to me and she says, how are you? I want to talk to you more. I, I want to know who you are. You know, and from that point on, from that point on, we developed the most amazing friendship because I took the time to comfort her, 
to forgive her. I'm telling something to somebody right now. Okay, so it goes on to say, um, if you don't do that, they're going to be all, all swallowed up with sorrow. Wherefore, I beseech you that you would now, not only are you going to forgive them, comfort them, now you're going to confirm your love <laughs> to them. How do you confirm your love to somebody? You let them know. You love them. Do you do it with words? Sometimes. But you do it with your actions. Sometimes people just want you to sit with them. They don't necessarily want a bunch of insight <laughs> or what they should be doing. Maybe they just want you to sit with them. That's confirming your love to them. That's letting them know, hey, I'm here for you. For to this end also did I write that I might know the proof of you, whether you be obedient in all these things. So are you going to forgive? Are you going to comfort? Are you going to confirm? Are you going to do these things as obedience to the Lord? Because then it says this, To whom you forgive anything, I will forgive. And verse 11, otherwise, if you don't do these things for others, guess what? Satan is going to get an advantage over you, for we are not ignorant of his devices. What are his devices? Unforgiveness, not confirming your love, not comforting one another. The opposite of what we were just instructed to do. When you forgive people from your heart, when you go and spend an extra little bit of time with them, you are keeping the enemy away from you. You are keeping the enemy away from you. That's huge, people. You don't have to cast out the devil every day in your life. You don't have to, you know, I'm going to get a hold of the strong man and pull him out or whatever it is. If you would love and forgive and comfort and, 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 and confirm your love to one another, that's actually like putting up a shield against Satan and his attacks to you. Isn't that what you want? You don't want enemy attacking you. I'm going to tell you something. If you feel like the enemy is attacking you right now, think about your relationships. Who have you not forgiven? Remember, if you don't forgive them from your heart, you're taking on all their characteristics and personalities and sins. Remember the old time when you were growing up, maybe, and you said, I'm never going to grow up to be like my mother. And guess what? You got a little bit of your mother in you. <laughs> well, first of all, you're your mother's daughter, so you're going to have part of her in you. Um... But the thing is, if you haven't forgiven your mother from your heart, you're going to take on those sinful characteristics that you don't want to be. It can change overnight. Like I said, people have called me after they've done the forgiveness exercise that I taught last week. And they've said, do you know what just happened? I haven't talked to my mother in five years. And I got a phone call from my mother the very next day after I did the forgiveness towards her. And it was like nothing ever happened. My, my relationship was totally restored. And now we've been hanging out and been doing things ever since. I had another lady say, I feel like I lost 100 pounds after she got rid of accusations and the pain and all that unforgiveness towards her mother. She just, it was just changed her demeanor. It changed the look on her face. There's another woman just recently at one of my conferences she is so on fire about this forgiveness exercise. She bought several of the little books and, and uh, been handing them out. And, and she's actually going to be doing a testimonial for me on YouTube coming up real soon. And, you know, it's impacting lives. When we forgive, it doesn't just fix everybody. It, it fixes us. So now we're equipped to be able to help somebody else. Isn't that what we want? We want to help other people. You know, so many of us, are in ministry or want to be in ministry, but they think they have to get all fixed up and done and, and go to college and learn. No. You're a minister right now. You've been uh, 
ordained by the Lord right now because you're his kid, period. You have the keys to the kingdom. You are able to help, but you've got to get your heart clean before the Lord and get rid of all the bitterness and unforgiveness and resentment that we're carrying around towards other people. It's going to take time. I still have stuff, but it's not like it used to be. Little by little, it's coming out. Little by little, the Lord's continuing to cleanse and heal and purge me. And I'm believing the same for you. You keep listening to these little, little, you know, bloggy things. Uh, I believe those little snippets are going to grab a hold of your spirit. And I'm believing that with my heart for you. As you grab a hold of these truths, they will change you. They're going to change you so much. You're going to see your spouse changed and you won't even have to say a word. My husband is so funny. He'll come into the office and he'll say, did you just pray for me? <laughs> and I'll say, not today. But see, the thing is, three a week or three weeks ago, I prayed for him or something happened in my life. As being one flesh, if something happens to me, it's going to have to somehow impact my husband. And it does. Like I said, when you forgive somebody, not only... Are you releasing your, you know, the junk that they've perpetrated upon you that you retained, but you're actually got this gigantic pair of scissors, spiritual scissors that are cutting the soul ties and those wrong uh, things and characteristics and cutting them so that now you're free. Okay. So that, uh, not only are you free, you're there now they're free. Now they can hear from God. Do you know that by not forgiving them, you're tying God's hands to helping them. Let me say that again. If you do not forgive the individuals that have hurt you, you are t you're saying, God, change them, change them, fix them, fix them. And he can't. He can, but he won't go against his word. Okay? So he's waiting for you to release the person through forgiveness so then he can do what he needs to do with that individual. Hands down, I've seen it over and over again. So I'm giving you some encouragement here. You take the time to really forgive from your heart. You take the time to really um, confirm, comfort, uh, all these things that the scriptures tells us to do. You can do it. You can do all things through Christ who strengthens you. And by the way, when you forgive, the Lord somehow drops a bit of compassion in you that you're going to be able to comfort, confirm all these things with that individual without even trying or making yourself do anything. It becomes second nature to you when you forgive. Well, until next time, God be with you and have a blessed day.